Hi everyone, thanks for joining me on the second installment of our Firebase Test Lab series. Last time we went through the getting started flow. In that video we uploaded our debug APK to Test Lab and Test Lab ran our first robo test automatically. As you saw in the last video, robo tests navigate your app automatically, capture log files, save a series of annotated screenshots, and then generate a video from those screenshots to show you the navigation performed. You can use these to determine the root cause of your app's crashes, and they also help you find issues with your app's UI. But what if we want to choose specific devices we're testing on, test for specific locales, or even set up auth? No worries, we have a tool for that. And you won't need to add any code to your app to get started. On this episode of Firecast, we'll learn how to set up a custom robo-test in Test Lab. Great, Firebase Test Lab lets you have coverage without much work on your end. One example is RoboTests. They give you as much testing ability as possible with minimal effort on your side. In our first video, we saw a preview of the power of RoboTests. And in this video, we're gonna configure Test Lab to work exactly how we want. On the way, we'll learn about our test matrix and robo configurations so you can set up your tests to meet exactly your needs. So let's dive in and make a customized RoboTest. Here I am in the testing dashboard. As you can see, this is different from our first run experience. Now we give you the power to make customizations you need to use Test Lab exactly how you want. You can see my previous tests listed here, and I can click in to see the results. Up in the right corner, you can see this plus sign. Click that and you'll see some options. We can click right into RoboTest, but for now, I'm gonna click Help Me Choose. You can choose between the three types, RoboTests that automatically crawl your app and find issues, instrumentation tests, which run Espresso, Robotium, and UI Automator tests, and game loops that can simulate actions of a player. Today we're gonna to choose robo tests, but each is useful for different situations, and you can read more in our docs. After clicking continue, we're presented with this upload APK screen. In Android Studio, I built my debug APK. To do that, I ran a clean and assemble debug gradle command. And then I found the path to my APK by running this command. Back in the console, I navigate to the path and upload the APK. It's done uploading and whoa, I see a screen with many options. We're gonna go through this very thoroughly so you know exactly how to get started when you try yourself. So, I enter our robo testing dimensions page. We test along different vectors, specifically device API pair, orientation, and locale. Together, this builds a test matrix where each combination is tested. On this screen, I can choose from over 30 physical devices and 11 virtual devices with different versions of Android installed. Further down, I can select device orientation and which locales I want to be included in the test. It's important to note the selection of orientation and locale applies to each device and API combo, which multiplies the number of tests for billing. If you're on the Spark plan, your number of tests are going to be limited. On Spark, you can run 5 physical device tests per day and 10 virtual device tests per day. On our Blaze plan, you pay per testing minute. Now let's open the advanced options. Here we have a couple options that are worth talking about. To help you control your potential billing exposure on the Blaze plan, you can start with a test timeout. We recommend setting it at 120 seconds and determining if it meets your needs based on your app's complexity. If your app uses Google Sign-In for authentication, Robo will use its own account to automatically sign in at the Google Sign-In dialog. Prior to the start of any test on a device, Test Lab installs a special Google account on the device. If Robo sees a login with Google button, it will click and then log into the app with that Google account. But if your app has a custom sign-in scheme, such as email and password, you can also tell Robo to enter that with the edit text fields and log in successfully too. You can do that here. Finally, you can provide up to three deep links. This means you can start your app crawl from a specific location in your app. Your app is first navigated normally from action start, and then each deep link is crawled for 30 seconds. Back in the console, I can see the option to save this template for future tests. One really interesting and useful thing here is the concept of the testing matrix. These are the dimensions of our test matrix, device, orientation, and locale. Below the confirm button says how many tests will be run. I click this and my tests start. After a couple minutes, I get this email alert showing me the test was a success. If I click the view results link, it leads me to a matrix specific results page where I can see a summary of all the device, API levels, and other options I selected back in the matrix. Test will show as passed, failed, inconclusive, or skipped. Here, all my tests passed. In Robo, if a test fails, it means we found a crash in your app. If I click into a test, I'll get the test-specific results like we saw in the first test lab video. If you came from that video, this should all look familiar. 
And that's how you use TestLab RoboTests. Like this video and subscribe if you want to hear more about TestLab and our other Firebase tools. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.